Hi guys, I'm Nicola McKenzie, founder and mortgage advisor at Dun & McCarthy Mortgages. And in today's video, I'm going to explain to you how long a mortgage agreement in principle will last, what happens if you don't find a property within that time scale, and explain to you why it's an important step that you should undertake before any house hunting. Stay tuned. Now guys, before we get into the detail of today's video, I want to point out that here at DM Mortgages, we are property, house buying, and mortgage specialists. We deal with lots of banks and building societies from high street names to specialist lenders as well. We can compare all of your options and provide our detailed knowledge and expertise to advise you on the best options for your circumstances. And we are happy to provide a mortgage agreement in principle for you completely free of charge. So head over to our website, which is dm.mortgage and book in for a free of charge appointment today. Now, before I explain how long agreement in principles last, I want to explain to you what a mortgage agreement in principle is and why it's important. Now, a mortgage agreement in principle is also commonly referred to as a decision in principle, a mortgage promise. You might hear people refer to it as an AIP or a DIP. It all means the same thing. So with a mortgage agreement in principle, a lender is going to check your credit history. They're going to check your income and your expenditure and your overall situation. And based on that information, they will say whether they are willing to accept you for a mortgage mortgage and how much you could potentially borrow. Now, key words there, the lender is agreeing in principle to accept an application from you. It's not a guarantee that your actual mortgage application is going to get accepted. You can only formally get an acceptance of a mortgage on a full mortgage application. And you can only do that when you've found a house and you have a property address. But what an agreement in principle is going to do is it's going to give you as much peace of mind as you can get before you find a house that you you are on the right lines in terms of affordability and in terms of your ability to be able to get a mortgage. Another thing you have to bear in mind is that again, a full mortgage application, something that you do when you've found a property, is where the bank is going to check and scrutinize things in much more detail than what they would do at agreement in principle stage. A mortgage agreement in principle, they're not physically looking at pay slips, bank statements, that comes upon full mortgage application. Usually the lender will, once they grant you a mortgage agreement in principle, if you pass their initial check, then they'll provide a certificate in writing to demonstrate that you can get a mortgage and how much for. Now the latest stage ideally that you want to be looking at getting an agreement in principle is right before you start viewing properties. You can get one after you start viewing properties, but realistically, you should be doing it before you view properties so that you've got a clear idea that you can get a mortgage for the value of the houses that you are considering. It's also important because if you do want to put in offers with the houses that you're considering, then an estate agent to show that you're a serious buyer most certainly will want to see an agreement in principle to forward your offer to the vendor with confidence that you are a serious buyer. And if you need an agreement in principle, like I said, book in for a free of charge appointment and we would be happy to provide you with that. But now let's look at how long they last and what happens if you don't find a house within that time scale. Now, an agreement in principle is going to depend on the lender as to how long it lasts. They all vary, but typically most banks will keep their agreement in principle valid for somewhere between 60 to 90 days. But some banks are as short as 30 days. Some might even be a little bit longer than 90 days. So whether you find a house within the validity of the agreement in principle or not, you still are going to have to jump through the same hoops when it gets to full mortgage application as you would have had to in the first place. But like I said, having that agreement in principle is just giving you that peace of mind that you're on the right lines in terms of the properties you're looking at, which is going to potentially save heartache later down the line. And again, it's proving that you're a serious buyer by the estate agent. And as I mentioned, because an agreement in principle is not a guarantee that a mortgage application will get accepted, if your circumstances change between getting the agreement in principle and making the full application, 
or let's say that the mortgage lender's criteria changes on who they now will and won't accept, then again, it could still potentially decline at an application stage. But I guess the one peace of mind that you have is that if you find a house closer to when you have the agreement in principle pass, then there is less of a chance that a change in circumstances is going to occur, which is going to mean that the agreement in principle is um, more of a certainty. As I said, nothing certain, you don't have a crystal ball to see if your circumstances are going to change, but an agreement in principle is as close as you can be at such an early stage that, like I say, you are on the right lines. Now, let's say that we have found an agreement in principle for you that's valid for 90 days. The 90th day approaches, you've not found a house. Agreement in principles, again, assuming that nothing major has changed in circumstances, they are very easily refreshed. Now, yes, that would potentially mean another credit search, but many mortgage lenders these days use a soft credit search as opposed to a hard credit search. And even where that bank is using a hard credit search, then you know, usually an agreement in principle or credit searches in general are generally only really problematic if you are carrying out multiple hard searches in a short space of time. Now, I'm not here to talk about the difference between soft and hard credit searches. That is for another video. But very brief summary, a soft search doesn't leave any footprints on your credit file for new lenders to see. A hard footprint would. But again, we know which lenders use soft, which lenders use hard. Depending on your circumstances, it's really about getting the best fit of a lender for your circumstances. So guys, the point of your agreement in principle is to make sure that you are in the best possible position and you've got peace of mind, like I say, that you can get a mortgage and you've got peace of mind of knowing how much you can get a mortgage for. With all due respect, yes, we are mortgage advisors, we're here to give you advice, um, but ultimately it's the bank that's lending you that finance. So ultimately it's them that you have to satisfy. Hence why an agreement in principle is a stage that you should not skip. And like I said, ideally get one before you start viewing properties. If you've already started viewing properties and you haven't got one, don't panic, just get in touch as soon as possible. Like I said, we deal with lots of high street banks as well as specialist banks to compare all of your options and make sure that you have the best mortgage deal to suit your circumstances. And we also specialize in the house buying process and in property too. So make sure that you get in touch. We are happy to help. Head over to the website, dm.mortgage and book in for a free of charge appointment today. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel as well if you found that video helpful. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.